Hey guys, it's Girl Got Game, and we, today we are going to take a gander at Elven Revenue Service. This is a game by Starbeast Inferno. I believe this is their very first game. And they contacted me through email and asked if I would mind taking a look at their demo. And I said I would like to because it sounded very interesting. As you can see from the menu, the uh, art style is very reminiscent of the 90s and early thousands RPG games like uh, Fire Emblem and Final Fantasy. So I uh, was intrigued by the art style because it kind of took me back to my younger years and thought, yeah, let's give it a go. So before we begin, I will just very briefly uh, read the story for this, and I will apologize in advance for any butchering of names. So, so sorry about that. I, I hope I don't butcher them too badly. But the story is, nestled in the heart of the kingdom at the foot of the mountains is the small city of Chilver. It's not the sort of place that adventurers and warriors would go out of their way to find. It's a relatively peaceful land where elves and dwarves, demons and humans, and everything in between can be found living side by side. Amid the inns and apothecaries, there is a hole-in-the-wall tavern that doesn't look like much from the outside. It's been a place for parties of travelers to meet, and those of all races to relax and unwind for decades. And even being under new management hasn't changed that. The new barkeep, an easy-going human from Chilvere, has finally gotten used to running a tavern. After closing up in the wee hours of the morning, the barkeep is shocked to see a long-lost childhood friend, Vivi, has arrived back in town. While initially caused to rejoice, there is another side to the surprise. The tavern is under audit from the Elven Revenue Service, and Vivi will be the auditor responsible. Can the barkeep muddle through the complexities of love and taxes and keep the place running, or will the doors of this historic tavern be closed for good? Dun dun dun. So, there's a little bit of background. So the game is... Um, like, it's it's fantasy, obviously. And it it's kind of takes some inspiration from Dungeons and Dragons and Lord of the Rings and those kinds of things. And the gameplay itself, from what I understand, is a mixture of management, dating sim, and traditional visual novel. So... You get to decide, you know, how you manage your bar and how involved in this auditing process you get to be and whether you even get involved with any of the characters romantically or as friends. So that's all up to you as the player. And I don't think you pick your gender. I think you're just a neutral gender. You just put your name in. And uh, yeah, you get to... I think there's seven potential romanceable characters eventually that they're planning for. So let's start meeting everybody and see what kind of bar we got and everything. Let's begin. Uh, what is my name? Oh, what name? What name? It's a good barkeep name. Uh, I think I'm gonna be like a gruff barkeep. I'm gonna... Uh, I know. I'm gonna be Gustav Mustav. <laughs> the best barkeep ever. Yes, sirree. Ooh, and I get to name my tavern, too. Awesome. Um. <laughs> I have thought about this. The Vulgar Beaver. <laughs> It's the perfect name for a Canadian bar, okay? <laughs> oh, good grief. All right. All right, here's our pub. Looks great. Well, that was cool. The end was finally near after another long night tending bar. Only a few regulars were still around this late, finishing off their drinks. I ushered our remaining patrons out as quickly as I could. Seems like you've, you're finally getting the hang of running the vulgar beaver, eh? I left you a special tip as thanks. Oh, really? Thanks, Lolliot. Did you leave it at the counter, or where? No, no. 
They say never look a gift horse in the mouth. But then perhaps it's okay just this once. Oh, riddles again. Of course. Merrily handing over a coin is far too dull otherwise. Pleasant dreams. I checked around to make sure there were no passed out drunkards to wake up, and then locked the doors. I breathed a sigh of relief when the building stood empty at last. Aside from my barmaid turned business partner, Sonia. Hello, Sonia. She was already getting the tables and chairs in order and sweeping the floors, so I went around to take care of the area behind the bar. She's a pretty good worker when she wants to be. Are you nearly finished? I would like to get off my feet. In just a moment. I've got to drain the basin and bring another keg up, and then we can lock the doors for the night. Can the keg not wait until opening? I would prefer to finish before the sun rises. You'd think that since it's so rare to see a dusk elf here in the city, I'd remember that Sonia was one more often. It never really occurs to me, though. She's just my semi-reliable business partner. After all, being sensitive to the sun is rarely an issue when working nights at a tavern. You know that's not how it works. It'll throw off my whole system for opening. Now, come on, it won't take that long. You can be very rigid at times. These are rules you created, you know. They can be changed at any time. But Sonia, where's the fun in that? She grumbled, but she was also following me into the basement, so that was good enough for me. We hoisted the keg up and brought it back to the bar. Sonia is stronger than she looks. From time to time, I've even seen her toss rowdy customers out the door all by herself. All right, that's good. Thank you for staying up to help with that, Sonia. Things have gotten a lot easier for me around here since I took you on, and I really appreciate that. First you are strict, then you are soft. To act like that, you must be on the verge of passing out. It is nothing. I had noticed long ago that Sonia wasn't used to receiving praise. She'd always brush it off like that. But by now, I could catch the telltale signs of her blushing. Some of the other shopkeepers had told me not to take her on, insisting that she was lazy and vicious. Dusk elves aren't always treated kindly beyond their own borders, and I figured that was all that it was. After all, she'd worked out well so far. In fact, business had never been better. Anyway, I will see you in the evening. She headed up the stairs to the room I'd been letting her stay in. I turned back and headed out the door, locking it behind me. The sun was just starting to peek over the horizon as I set off down the street, headed home. I hadn't had a standalone home for very long, but with the uptick in business, I had finally been able to afford it. To not have drunks banging on the door and waking me up in the middle of the day. Now that was the dream. As I wandered down the street, I saw a carriage pull up to an inn just a few blocks away. A woman stepped out, her elven ears prominently on display, and began collecting her belongings. She turned around for just a moment, and then... Vivi? Ooh! Such pretty art! I like! I like very much! It had been fifteen years, and yet I recognized her instantly, as if she'd left only last week. But then, that's just how those elven types are, isn't it? Yes? Oh, Gustav Mustav. Is it? Is that really you? Wh what are you doing here? Nice to see you again, too. Oh, of course. I'm sorry, I just... I had to take a shot here. I couldn't let this reunion just be a fleeting moment on the street corner. Hey, I'm sure you're tired from traveling all night, but would you like to grab a drink? Now? She looked back at the still dim sky, then at her luggage, and finally back at me. Oh, 
No, not that kind of drink. There's a lovely little cafe that a friend of mine runs around the corner. Are you familiar with coffee? A cafe here? Really? Well, you'll have to give me a moment to formally check into the inn. Could I perhaps meet you at seven? Yes, of course. Very reasonable. I'll see you there. Caffeine would hardly matter at this point. I couldn't possibly sleep after that encounter anyway. I hurried home and cleaned myself up before turning around and setting back out towards the cafe. The streets were often still empty at this point in the morning. A man tending to the street lamps here, a boy bringing in goods from his family farm there. At the last crossroads before I reached the cafe, I heard a voice call out to me in greetings. Good morning, Gustav Mustav. It's so rare to see you out and about at this time of day. Oh, Ruby. Good morning. Yeah, it seems to be a rare kind of day. Ruby was setting up a display on the street corner, using a portable stepladder she often carried with her. At her feet was a basket of freshly picked flowers, taken from the countryside just beyond the city's borders. Well, I'm always glad to see when someone's in a good mood. I'd say I am, but how are you doing? Hoping to draw in a lot of business today. With any luck. I looked down at the collection of flowers, and a thought crossed my mind. Haha! <laughs> oh, that gives me Final Fantasy VII vibes. Yes, let's buy a flower. I suppose I'll be your first customer of the day, then. Could I get a flower, please? I think I like that one. I dug a few bronze coins out of my pocket and placed them lightly in Ruby's hand. Aw, that blush. Oh, but... Now remember what we talked about last time. You can't give out merchandise for free, even to your friends. I didn't know if it was actually good advice, but it was one of the things Laliet had drilled into me when I first started running the tavern. Of course, that hadn't stopped him from accepting a free drink now and then. You did the work of picking it and bringing it here. You deserve it. Right. I just never really think of it that way. I guess us halflings just aren't cut out for business, huh? No, no, it's nothing like that. Learning the ropes just takes time. Ruby handed over the flower I'd chosen, then slowly slid the coins into her pocket. Well, thank you. Please enjoy your purchase. I'm sure she will love it. Ah, oh, that's how you look unanimated. Gotcha. I spotted Vivi standing under the awning outside the cafe, taking in the warmth of the early morning sun. She had her long hair pulled back behind her pointed ears, exposing them for all the world to see. She smiled as I approached. Is that for me? How lovely. It was a spur-of-the-moment sort of thing. But you always did love flowers, didn't you? I still do. I've been growing a small garden outside my home, although I haven't had such a nice bloom yet. Perhaps when I get back. Eager to get out of here, I take it. Can't say I blame you. It's nothing like that. I haven't been avoiding chill there or anything, if that's what you're thinking. You'd have every right to, after how the other kids treated you. It was a long time ago, and I've grown since then. Now, I take it I found the right place. Shall we step inside? Oak, the cafe owner, waved at me as we headed inside. Well, if it isn't Gustav Mustav, and you've brought a friend, no less. Seems my morning is off to a great start. Hi, Oak. Oak was always so peppy in the morning, right when I'm at my most exhausted. Somehow he never seemed to catch on. A uh, pleasure to meet you. My name is Vivi, and I grew up around here. I must admit, I'm a bit surprised to find a cafe here in Chilvere. Thank you. I haven't been open for long, so let's just hope that this town develops a taste for coffee. What can I get you? 
We'll just have two of your basic drinks. Remember, it'll keep you up. Right, right. We'll be over there. Vivi and I sat down at a small table in the corner near the window. So, uh, what is it that's brought you back to town? Official business? Yep. I'm working for the Elven Revenue Service now, see? She pointed out a small badge on her top. I'd scarcely noticed it. Wow, that's impressive. You were able to get certified in everything. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm glad I could finally give you the news. But yes, I'm here to conduct audits on some local businesses. I think my first stop is a tavern, the Vulgar Beaver. It's supposedly not far from here. Yeah, probably a tavern with that kind of name. But wait, what did she say? The Vulgar Beaver? That's my place! So does that mean she's talking to me as part of her investigation? Oh yeah, that place, huh? Um, what did they do wrong exactly? If you can share, that is. Ah, just something about the numbers didn't quite add up. My boss is pretty perceptive when it comes to that sort of thing. Insists she can spot an attempt to launder even a single bronze piece. That precise. Oak dropped off our drinks with a nod, then stepped back behind the counter. Had we been overheard? I had no idea what could be wrong with my taxes. I'm not the brightest, but I can do some simple math at least. I was so sure I did it right. Maybe it has to do with taking on a new employee. Were there special rules for that? Well, I'm sure she exaggerates a bit, but her senses are quite finely honed. I wouldn't be the least bit surprised if she did pull that sort of thing off. She's good. Sounds like she'd be the perfect mentor. It's funny, isn't it? She's good at her job, I can tell you that. As for teaching me, well... Even elves can't be amazing at everything, I suppose. I froze as I said it. I didn't know how the elves had treated her in the intervening years. Perhaps they were far more abusive than the humans in our class had ever been. Regardless, I should have known better than to even allude to that elven elitism in front of her. She's always been very kind, at least, and I'm thankful for that. I'll take kindness over mentoring any day. She was so relaxed, like it hadn't even registered. And like she wasn't thinking about working, either. Is it possible she doesn't know that's my bar that she's here for? The smart thing to do would be to stop talking to her, to avoid giving her anything that might be used against me. But then, it was Vivi, my best friend who I hadn't seen in over a decade. So things have been better for you among the elves. Oh, yes, quite a bit. Elves aren't much for physical bullying. There's just a tacit sort of disapproval that lurks behind the eyes. That's... wow. I'm sorry to hear that they haven't all been as nice as your boss, but it is a relief to hear that no one's been throwing stones at you for the past ten years. Fingers crossed that I can keep that streak going. She smiled, charming as ever. It may have been said in jest, but I could tell that there was a part of her that still worried about it. Me too. Sorry. Shouldn't get too heavy this early in the morning. Nothing to apologize for. Anyway, I ought to get going. I need to get to work if I'm going to finish all these audits on time. Oh, well, I, uh... I wouldn't waste my time heading over to that tavern right now. It's certainly closed. But the owner lives there, right? I believe I read something like that in this report. That used to be the case, but not anymore. Got a house somewhere. You're better off waiting until the tavern opens in the evening. I don't know why I said it like that, but I had to buy a little time at least. If that were to be dropped on Sonia by surprise, I really don't know how she'd react. Perhaps you're right. I'll visit some of the other businesses first and stop by the Vulgar Beaver tonight. Still, I better be on my way. 
I suppose I should too. We both stood up and set the chairs back under the table. I waved farewell to Oak as we left. I walked her back over towards the inn, a quiet moment washing over us in the still morning air. Seemed like you were dragging a bit when I first ran into you. I'm guessing you've got the kind of work that keeps you up all night, eh? Shit. I nearly outed myself, didn't I? I'd rather not have to tell her I'm the reason she's here she doesn't already know. Sure, I'll have to deal with it eventually, but I need to find out what happened first so I know what I'm in for. The Elven Revenue Service is notoriously strict about these sorts of things, and I don't want to risk jail time over some honest mistake I can't explain. Yes, something like that. But I've always been a bit of a night owl. I do seem to remember you throwing pebbles at my window after midnight on quite a few occasions. Glad you found something that works for you. Like, romantically? Or just, like, hey, best friend, are you awake? <laughs> we reached the door at the inn and she stepped inside. Oh, so this is the inn, eh? This room reminds me of something. Like, the, the background of another game I played years ago, but I can't for the life of me think what it is. Like, the fireplace in particular is ringing some kind of bell, but I can't picture it at all. It was nice to have the chance to catch up. I've always wondered how you've been. It was, wasn't it? Perhaps if I can clear up this audit, I'll have a little free time to chat again before I leave. I'd like that. I'll see you later, then. Once Vivi was out of sight, I started to realize the magnitude of the problem that had just been dropped on me. I'd never understood all this tax stuff properly, and our records aren't the best kept in the world. It's entirely possible there was some kind of problem with the numbers, but at most, it would be a handful of gold. Certainly not enough to warrant sending an auditor all the way out here to confront me over, right? So it must be a fairly big discrepancy, then. Bigger than I could possibly account for, and they'll never believe that I can't explain it. They'll see that I bought a new house and assume the worst. Vivi might take pity on me, but she can only have so much sway with her boss, and you don't get to the top of the Elven Revenue Service by going easy on tax evaders. I can't count on her to get me out of this. I've got to do it myself, and preferably before she can realize that I'm the reason she's here. I wasn't sure who to go to at first, but it occurred to me that these were fundamentally legal problems. I decided to head over to my lawyer's office, and just hope she was in early today. Seems reasonable. Thankfully, she was. She opened the door and regarded me with surprise. Hello, lawyer. Well, well. To what do I owe the honor? Someone died at the bar last night. What? No, of course not. What kind of establishment do you think I run, Lilith? Relax, I'm only teasing you. Lilith sat down at her desk as she said it and began making a note on her calendar. The quill bit into the paper in time with the smooth, slow jazz that was coming from... somewhere. I'd never been clear on whether she had any magical abilities herself, or simply had some high-profile contacts. Her tense red fingers guided the tip of the quill across a blank sheet of parchment, leaving lines of ink as black as cinder. It was almost like she was burning law into the page. I'd come to her a few times before, usually to deal with liability issues and the like. She helped me file incorporation paperwork, ensuring my tavern was all above board. She later revealed that I was one of her first clients, so I guess she had developed a bit of a soft spot for me. Apparently, the people of town weren't eager to trust a demon with their legal work, but having the chance to prove her competence and honesty had helped her reputation. You didn't schedule an appointment. 
From her tone, it's almost impossible to tell if she's happy or upset. Every time I see her, she's unshakably calm and professional. Aside from a bit of gentle teasing, of course. Sorry, but it's kind of an emergency. I often have a very tight schedule, Gustav Mustav. You can't simply show up at my office unannounced like this and expect me to be available. It was still early. I looked around, but there was no sign of anyone else waiting, and I could even catch a glimpse of her schedule on her desk. It looked to me like she was in for a slow day. You're right. I'm sorry. Should I make an appointment and come back later, then? Don't be silly. You're already here. Take a seat. Thanks, Lilith. So, what's so urgent that you had to pay me a visit so early? Something interesting, I hope. <laughs> uh, phrasing <laughs> with the second one. I've got a problem, and I came to you because I know you can get me off for a fair price. <laughs> Yeesh. Yeah, I don't know about that. Um, yeah, Lilith, let me be above board with you, my girl. Your taxes. They were finished a long time ago. She reached down into one of the drawers, quickly located my files, and placed them onto the desk. She had a lot more paperwork on me than I had realized. Well, you see, I ran into a childhood friend of mine for the first time in years. Ah, oh, I'm afraid I can't provide any legal advice through you. Your friend will have to come to me personally for help. Oh, no! It's not her problem. See, I spoke with her for some time after I left work. Really hit it off, actually. It was great to see her again. Eventually, she... Oh, I see now. So sorry for misunderstanding. She flashes a bright smile, practiced yet somehow still genuine. Marriage certainly will improve your tax situation. The king has issued some excellent incentives to marry through the royal church. Congratulations, by the way. It seemed a bit odd. She wasn't usually one to jump to conclusions like that. Maybe she likes you. No, that's not it either. While there are no incentives for a simple cohabitation... Please give me a moment to explain. My questions really have nothing to do with any of that. Oh, my apologies, then. Do go on. So, this childhood friend. As we were talking, she tells me that she works for the Elven Revenue Service now, and she's in town to audit a local tavern. Mine, to be precise. I see. That certainly would stress you out, wouldn't it? But don't worry. I have all your records right here. We should be able to provide her any information she wants to see. Lilith opens the file and gives the paperwork within a cursory glance. Yes, I don't think you have anything to worry about. I hope you know by now that I keep very good records, so as long as everything is clean on your end, there shouldn't be anything more than a routine audit. They do randomly select business owners sometimes, just to be sure. Right, I suppose that's true. Wait, what do you mean by clean? You know, so long as you're telling the truth about your revenue. I mean, you aren't getting any money under the table that you aren't declaring, are you? I see you've listed your tips here. No, of course not. I swear, my tips are totally accurate, and that's the only place I can think of where that might be an issue. Then you don't have anything to worry about. Audits can be stressful, but so long as you're upfront about everything, there shouldn't be a problem. Oh, <sighs> I heaved a sigh of relief. Just a routine, randomly selected audit. There's nothing wrong with my numbers. I know it. Now, I hate to bring this up, but it does need to be addressed. Your partner, the Dusk Elf Woman. You made her co-owner not too long ago, didn't you? If she... 
made some mistakes on her end of the paperwork, then you might be culpable. Sonia couldn't do something like that. Could she? No, I'm sure she didn't. I trust her. Lilith closed the folder and stared at me for a moment. I know that you two are close, and your inclination is to jump to her defense. Even if you don't think it's likely, you have to talk to her about this. I'm not saying it'll be a fun conversation, but it's one that must take place. You're not just making accusations because she's a dusk elf, are you? I hope you know me better than that by now, Gustav Mustav. But the fact is, I don't trust anyone. It's an essential skill in this line of work. I am not making accusations, and I am not blaming her without evidence. I am simply saying that it would be best for both of you to be on the same page. If she is really an equal partner in this business, then you're both in this together. She had a point. It'll be an awkward conversation, but I will have to talk to her about this sooner or later. While Sonia may not be a fan of authority, we still have to comply with this audit. Okay, I get it. That just leaves one last thing. How involved do you want to be in this process? Some business owners prefer for me to handle it entirely, while others like to stay informed every step of the way. Um... Well, she did just say, like, I don't trust anybody. So I probably shouldn't trust her. <laughs> I mean, she seems very capable. And I'm also curious, I don't know how much of the auditing management is implemented in the demo, so I'll stay involved just to see if that is a thing. As much as I might hate it, I do need to face this. With Vivi involved. Understood. I'll keep you informed. If you need anything else, feel free to come back by. But please... Do try to send a message and make an appointment in the future. Thanks, Lilith. I'm always glad to have you on retainer. I decided it was better to get this over with, so I turned around and headed back to the bar after I left Lilith's office. I mean, it's probably a good idea to talk about this before evening and VV shows up at the bar. After that long night last night, Sonia wouldn't be happy that I woke her up. But it's better to tell her sooner rather than later. I entered the tavern, climbed the stairs, and knocked on her door. Eh? Is that you? What are you doing here? Sorry to wake you, but we need to talk. Can you come downstairs with me? Uh, okay. You're not going to throw me out, are you? There was a hesitance to her voice that brought to mind memories of our first meeting. It hadn't been easy to earn each other's trust. I led her to one of the tables and we sat down. Alright, so... I heard something today. It's gonna be important for both of us, so we have to work together and get this straightened out, okay? What are you talking about? She was still half asleep, but I could tell she was trying. And to be fair, I wasn't being as clear as I could be. It would be best to just start from the beginning. I ran into an old friend today, and it turns out that she now worked for the Elven Revenue Service. I don't know if she meant to, but she revealed that our tavern is the place she's here to audit. We have to make sure our finances are in order before she gets here. Oh, taxes. I am... I am not very good with numbers. Me either, but we have to take this time to get ahead of the problem. Do you have some documents we can look at? Records of your tips, that sort of thing. I have some, at least. Give me a moment. She headed back up to her room and came down with a messy box of receipts and notes. I retrieved my own records and returned to the table as well, looking at the mass of paper before us. This might take a while. Nothing to it but to just dive in, I suppose. I might be too tired for this, but I will try. 
I started comparing her records to mine, and working through them for the last year. Look here. It says the total in the tip jar was 16 silver that night. But when you look at the individual records, you took home 10, and I took home 10. How can that be? I supplemented it a little bit. That didn't sound good. Supplemented? How? Well, I wanted to pay you back by helping this place to thrive. So I decided to start offering a few other services off the menu. Oh boy. Wait, what? Why didn't you tell me you wanted to do that? I wanted you to feel like the profit was all you and your hard work. You deserved that success. Telling you would undermine that. I was starting to panic a bit. Was Lilith right to be suspicious? I appreciate the intent, but I really need to know everything that's going on around here. So, just what exactly have you been doing? She looked away and sighed heavily. Oh. Before I came to the city, I would make potions that were very popular in my homeland. As I traveled, I found that humans enjoyed them as well. So I thought I would start offering some to the adventurers that come through here for extra cash. Ah. Potions? What kind of potions exactly? A few different kinds. One of them sends your consciousness to distant planes of reality. Another can radically increase a person's strength temporarily. There's also one that accelerates the body's healing to the extreme, making wounds disappear like that. I might not have survived my trip to the city without it. It wasn't what I had feared, but somehow this was even worse. The penalty for distributing these kinds of magical brews is incredibly harsh, and it would be nearly impossible to explain. Sonia, I know you're not from here, but the kingdom is pretty strictly against those kinds of potions. They consider them to be drugs, and it's a major crime to be distributing them. What? Why? They are so very useful! Her confusion seemed to be earnest, but the law would hardly care about her ignorance of it. They can have really bad side effects, especially if they're not made perfectly. You have to stop doing that right away. She started to argue, but she could see how serious I was, and quickly relented. Oh, her face like, Wah. I did not understand. I swear I have been making them right. I truly enjoy crafting them, but if you really want me to stop... It's not about what I want, okay? It's the law. I'll be honest, I don't fully understand it either. But, understand it or not, we have to abide by it or we'll be in big trouble. So, I'm sorry, but this is just the way things have to be. Are we not in trouble already? She had a point. The discrepancies were there, like Vivi had said, and I didn't have a legitimate explanation for them. Don't worry about that. I'll find a way to handle the odd. Just make sure you stop distributing those potions, okay? You absolutely have to tell anyone who comes around asking that they can't get that kind of stuff here. Alright. I am sorry, Gustav Mustav. I assure you, I was not trying to cause trouble. I just wanted to help. Well, you could have done that without getting me involved. Now we can both go to jail, so thanks a lot. I mean, she seemed sincere. Things are a little different here, and you aren't familiar with it all yet. No hard feelings. Do you... do you really mean that? I nodded. You remain so calm and collected under pressure. I was sure you would yell and scream and throw me out over an incident like this. I can't be mad at you for doing things differently than us. Dusk Elf culture is a bit unique, I get that. We just have to make sure you understand what is and isn't allowed here, okay? 
I will try. That's all I can really ask of you. Now, get some sleep. I'll figure something out. Make sure you get some sleep too. You cannot defeat the law if you are exhausted. Wise words. We're not defeating it. Conquering it then. Sleep well. Ah. Uh, all right. She ascended the stairs and headed back into her room, and I was left staring at the huge stack of papers in front of me. I locked up again and headed home to get a little sleep. I managed a few hours of rest at least, but it was hard to sleep with so much on my mind. As the afternoon approached, I gave in, woke up, and tried to think of something to do next. Um... Okay, I guess I can start, like, picking roots here, or... I don't really need to patch things up with Sonia. I kind of left things on a good note with her. Um, I don't really want to distract Vivi. I feel like the more we... I don't know, I mean, you have to spend time with her, but at the same time, I'm like... Once she comes to the bar that night and sees that he never told her, it's gonna be like... <laughs> I like Demon Lady anyway. I'm gonna go talk to Lilith. I decided to return to Lilith's office and tell her everything. I had laid out everything for her, and we had started working on the documents not long after, but she hadn't said a word in what felt like ages. Her ethereal jazz began gnawing at the corners of my mind as I waited for her to respond. So, just how bad is it? She showed no sign of reaction, instead continuing to stare at the page. After yet another minor eternity, she spoke up. As your attorney, I can't sugarcoat it for you. It's not good. Is it really that bad? How much could it have been thrown off? She sucked on her teeth for a moment as she struggled for the right words. Her lips made a little pop as the pressure released. The typical outcome in a case like this would be that they simply allow you to declare bankruptcy and call it even. You would lose the vulgar beaver, and likely your new house as well, but it would be enough to cover the missed taxes and numerous fines. I was stunned. How could that even be? It was just a few potions. The tips were never that significant, were they? It can't possibly be that bad. How much do we owe? Trust me, you're better off not asking that right now. I could feel the depths of despair open before me. Losing everything was the best I could hope for. Well, what if we're not lucky? Jail time. If the situation is taken to court as is, there isn't much I'll be able to do. Even if you wanted to try to pass all the responsibility onto Sonia, it would be hard to argue that you weren't aware of what was going on. There has to be something else. Some way to save something. Lilith noticed the fear rising within me, and tries to offer a comforting look in response. The severity of the situation will depend significantly on who it is that conducts the audit. So a childhood friend. As a lawyer, I can't advise that you do anything illegal. Right. Anything that might be construed as bribery or impropriety. I'm ready to consider anything. You know how much the tavern means to me. Lilith rubbed her temples for a moment just below her horns. Give me a little time to think on this. It's possible there are some other options I'm not aware of. For now, however, if the auditor hears anything about what your business partner has been doing, her hands will be tied. It's the sort of thing she'll have to report to her superiors, so don't volunteer anything. Understand? I nodded, but I was worried that it might be too late for that already. Lilith let out a small yawn and rested her head in her hands for a moment. <sighs> to be perfectly honest, 
I've been dealing with some personal matters of my own recently. I might need to rest a bit before I can be at my best. I could tell she meant well. She really wanted to help me, and she was trying her hardest. But at this rate... Although Lilith tried to hide it, I knew she still didn't have too many other clients. If this went well, it could raise her profile a bit. But if she doesn't pull it off, everything I'd worked for could be gone. <laughs> you always insist that you're a competent lawyer, but you can't even handle this. Maybe the rumors are right about you after all. <gasps> Coffee date? I don't even need to think about what choice I want to do. It does seem like you could use a break. Would you like to get some coffee? To be honest, I might need it myself. Lila seemed skeptical about my offer, and her eyes narrowed as she searched my face for signs of a lie. I'm asking you out for coffee! What kind of lie am I concocting? And I suppose this coffee will be at your place. Oh no, I'm terrible with coffee. I still can't even get beer right. I was thinking Oak's Cafe. Have you been there before? Lilith tapped a black fingernail against the desk, contemplating my offer. I hadn't realized it was such a big deal. I suppose there's no harm. It might be best for both of us to think about something else for a while. Let me file these last few documents and I'll be out in five minutes. Yeah, she really had to, like, mull that over. She's like, mmm, sus. I kept an eye on the clock tower as I waited outside. Exactly four minutes and 58 seconds later, Lilith exited the office. I mean, she's very timely. The more time I spend with her, the more confidence I have in her abilities. I pointed out the proper direction, and we walked there together in silence. Up till now, our relationship had been strictly professional. I was afraid to come across too friendly, and that she might think that was just an attempt to get into her pants like so many others. But after all this time, it seemed like we might finally be at a point where we could start to be friends. Um... Hmm. I'll try asking about her. So why did you decide to become a lawyer? Why? Is it that strange? Am I not allowed into a dignified profession like this? She was so defensive. I should have seen that coming. No, of course not. I was just wondering if practicing law was a family business or something. It isn't. Oh, okay. Well, good to know. Welp. I tried. We arrived at the cafe shortly afterward, and st- <laughs> Afterward? I don't know, my, my mouth like gave up halfway through that line. Let me try that again. We arrived at the cafe shortly afterward and stood just inside the door. Oh god. You know, I like my coffee like I like my girls. Uh, yeah? Tall and- Red? Bitter and... <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I'll offer it. I I'm not doing the second one. I'm gonna- I'll try the first one. I can get this if you'd like. She looked over at me like I was crazy. No, thank you. You're in dire financial straits as it is. It's tough to argue with that when she just read through every scrap of income-related paperwork I had, so I let it go. We placed our orders and took a seat at a table near the window. Oak smirked at seeing me again today, but said nothing. I don't need to hear it, Oak. I probably wouldn't have been able to sleep anyway, so what harm could another cup do? I'm sorry. What? She just said it out of nowhere. 
Was she even talking to me? I've been pretty stressed the past few days, but that's no excuse. I shouldn't let my personal life interfere with my work, and so I wanted to apologize if that's adding to your problems. It's fine. I know I'm not the only one you're working for. Although, if you really wanted to make it up to me, I wouldn't mind hearing just what it is that's been bothering you. Why do you care? You're going to be helping me with my problem. It only seems fair for me to listen to yours. Lilith heaved a sigh of resignation. Huh. <sighs> my mother will be coming to town at the end of the week. A shiver seemed to run down her spine at the mere mention of her mother. They must have a pretty complicated relationship. I get that. Family can be tough. No, I assure you. You really, really don't. If you explain a bit more, I'm sure I could. I'd prefer not to get into it right now. There has to be some way to get her to open up. After all, if I can help her with this, then she'll be able to fully concentrate on my case. Gosh, I don't know. Mm, I don't want to do the bottom one. I'm worried about the parents one if she's like, Oh, you think that's bad? You know nothing, Jon Snow or Gustav Mustav. So I'm like... I don't know where the top one's gonna go, but I'm gonna go for it and see. Do you remember when I took ownership of the Vulgar Beaver? Of course. That was when we met and I took you on as a client. The former owner was a good friend of mine. I'd worked for him a bit as a busser when I was younger, and later on it became my favorite drinking spot. Whenever I was having a hard time at work, or with my family, he was always there to listen and give me advice. On my worst days, he'd even give me a drink on the house. He always could tell which days were the worst from the moment I walked in. And yet, in all that time, I never really asked about him. One day he didn't come in to open the bar. I thought he just slept in, but then it was still closed the next day, too. I wondered. Had he sold it and retired? Had he run off with one of those elven girls like he sometimes joked about? But it turned out it wasn't anything like that. I received a letter a few days later, stating that he had died in his sleep, and that I was mentioned in his will. Apparently he didn't have any surviving family, so he'd left the place to me. I had considered selling it at first. There were certainly plenty of offers, but I knew he would have wanted me to take on the mantle of running it myself. He'd been my shoulder to cry on for so long, and I decided that it was time for me to pass that favor on. So I kept the name, went to you to get the paperwork cleared up, and that was that. It's been tough, and I've had to learn a lot on the fly. That may all sound silly, but that's why this place means so much to me. I wasn't aware of that. I mean, I knew it was passed down to you, of course, but I didn't know the nature of your relationship. Seems like that went well. Should I share a little more? Hmm. I'm like, maybe because I led with that, it would be okay to do this now? Uh, I'll try. I don't imagine I've ever mentioned my parents to you before. No, I don't think so. My father. Well, he's always insisted that I get into the trades. Smithing, tailoring, it didn't much matter what. He was a farmer. But he wanted a better life for me, 
So I wound up here in Chilver for schooling. I tried a few apprenticeships, but they were disastrous. My mother, on the other hand, worried about city life. She'd been brought up in the temple, and feared the corruption the city could bring on me. I guess in some sense she was right to worry, since I had some dark times in this place. But she's backed off of it in recent years. Even when I head back to the village, I haven't seen her practice her faith in ages. I wonder sometimes if I managed to disappoint her so much that she stopped believing. After all, I've been screwing up since I got here, no matter how much she prayed. Taking over the tavern is the best thing to ever happen to me, but sometimes I feel like I didn't earn it, and now I might lose it anyway. Well, that certainly does sound familiar. But let me tell you this. Keeping that bar up and running is a more impressive feat than you might think. Most businesses fail within the first three months. Your parents have plenty to be proud of. It seemed like that had made her comfortable enough to share. Yes. My parents were never married. My father is a good, decent man, and he tried to raise me to be decent, too. But my mother, she's never really understood me. She still thinks going into law is just a phase. I could see her hand beginning to clench into a fist, but she took a deep breath and released her grip as she breathed out. Why does she think that? My mother isn't a believer in women having careers. Every time my work gets stressful, I start to fear that she's right. That I'm not good enough. That I'm not happy doing this and I never can be. Well, you definitely didn't make it easy on yourself, picking a tough career like that. But that just makes it all the more amazing how well you've done. You are a great lawyer. Aw, the blush. She gave a small, polite smile in return. Although if I didn't know better... I'd swear there was a rosy glow in her already red cheeks. Sorry, none of this is your problem. The point is just that I'm not eager to see her this weekend, and it's been weighing on me. Oh. Lilith sighed and rose to her feet. This has been a nice break, but I must be getting back to work. I think so too. Perhaps we can make it a regular thing. <laughs> Lilith laughed, waving the idea away. I appreciate the offer, but for now at least, I'm going to need to concentrate on keeping you out of prison. Right. Definitely don't want to interfere with that. Maybe next time we come here it can be a celebration. We said our goodbyes and headed off in different directions. Talking it out seems to have made Lilith more relaxed at least, and maybe it helped me out a bit too. Aw, how cute! That's it for the demo. If you want to continue the story, please support the full release of Elven Revenue Service. Super cute! Okay. Oh, I didn't want to actually leave. Uh, badoop. I guess that goes to the website. There we go. Okay, so we didn't get to any of the management auditing stuff in the demo, which makes sense, but I thought on the off chance it was there, I wanted to give it a chance to be shown off. But anyway, that is our introduction to the world and the characters. There's some real cutie pies in this. And uh, I don't know, it was very wholesome. I, I quite enjoyed that. And of course, like the art and music takes me back to a time long gone and the time before time. <laughs> So I had a really good time with this, guys. I hope you enjoyed my gander of this. If you enjoyed this and would like to check out the demo yourself, it just came out on Itch.io. So I will leave a link to the Itch.io page if you would like to try this out yourself. Maybe you'd like to spend time with Sonia or Vivi. And I believe the Kickstarter for this is going to be on April 15th. So it's quite a ways away, but keep an eye out on this. I think it's a real cute idea. I like the concept of it, and um, it's got a very unique art style and music for a visual novel. So yeah, lots of good things here. 
And thanks very much once again to Starbeast Inferno for contacting me about checking out this game. I really enjoyed it and wishing you all the best with your continued uh, development of this and also your upcoming Kickstarter. But that's it for me for today, guys. Thanks again for joining me and until next time, I will see you later.